Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture, we will explore certain problems that can occur if we add constraints on our table. Sometimes we don't need to be very strict with our rules. Otherwise, we might not be able to solve our problems. We might get stuck into infinite loops. For example, if two people fight and we have created a rule that whoever fights, he has to say sorry. If you ask person 1 to say sorry, he will say sorry only if person 2 says sorry first. Similarly, if you ask person 2 to say sorry, then he will say that if person 1 says sorry first, then only he will say sorry. Here, we can solve the problem unless we add some flexibility to our rules. We will request one to step down and say sorry first and other will say after you or vice versa. Without one person bending, this becomes infinite loop. Let's see how this example applies to our databases. Suppose we have a product and a category table and the product table is referring category table with foreign key constraint attribute category ID. If you want to insert directly into products table a tuple with category ID 8 and there is no such tuple in category table, so what will happen? It's actually a violation of foreign key constraint that is invalid data entry. Should we reject this insertion or should we go for fx? Maybe we can insert into product table temporarily without category ID that is adding null as its value. After adding the tuple in product table with null category ID, we need to now add this category in our category table. After adding this new category in our category tuple, we can update existing product table with new category ID. In this example, we have a person table and it contains ID, name and ID of the person he or she is married to, gender and age as its attribute. Married to PID is foreign key constraint to person table which says that married to PID will only contain valid person IDs. So, as per given data, Amir is married to Sadia and Sadia is married to Amir. If you want to add a tuple, say a person named Ali, but he is married to Rihanna, which is not added yet. And no matter if we add Rihanna first or Ali first, there is foreign key violation. So, we need to defer our constraint checking until both insert statements are executed. There is also another option. After running query 1, if we add null in married to PID for Ali and after that we should run query 2. Once both are inserted, we can update the married to PID in query 1. However, this technique requires more programming effort and does not work if the attribute cannot be set to null. So as discussed, we need to have some kind of uh, options to defer our constraint checking until the task has been done completely. So we have a keyword deferable which says that constraint will be checked by default but it can be made deferable in need. We have given options which will be mentioned after deferred keyword. Number one being the initially deferred which says that constraint checking will be delayed until the end of the transaction. That is, until the transaction ends, DBMS will not check any kind of constraint in the given set of queries. So DBMS will be at the violation for some time. For option two, constraint checking will be made after every statement. Let's see how can we add this deferable keyword during the creation of our relations. So we have created our person table and added the primary key, foreign key in the end. We have also specified with deferable initially deferred so that our foreign key constraint is deferred until the end of the transaction. So now we can add Ali or Rehana, whichever comes first, and we will get no errors. Constraint will only be violated temporarily. Constraint will only be checked once both insert statements are executed but we need to know that both insert statements must be written in the transaction. So let's say if we have named our constraint to be my named constraint, then we can make it a defer later using the set command. Similarly, we can reverse our defer to immediate using the set command as well.